Good morning, St. Michael. Good morning. Good morning. Good to have everybody with us here this morning. Thank you for being with us. Um, surprise, surprise, I'm here. <laughs> and not where I was supposed to be. Um, for the third time, my uh, surgery got canceled. Uh, this time, I failed my EKG. So I have to go uh, to a cardiologist before they'll do my other little surgery. So, you know, life is crazy. Life is crazy. But the good news is I get to hear in person Pastor Mary Anderson uh, preach oh, yeah. our sermon today. <laughs> so yay! Lucky you. Um, you're in for a treat. A couple of announcements before we begin. One of them is that we have some things on our calendar this week. One of them is that we have beer and hymns on Tuesday night at Craft and Draft in Irmo, and we are celebrating Thanksgiving. And uh, if you bring a canned good or a or non-perishable food item, I think you'll get a little bit of a treat um, at Craft and Draft. Uh, but we'll sing lots of songs about Thanksgiving and lots of song, songs uh, about harvest and fall. And so we're looking forward to having folks there. Starts at 5 o'clock, ends by 7. So we're glad to have you there and uh, hope you'll make it. It's kind of, a, kind of an event that we hope you will invite your friends to. And it's not that we are trying to steal anybody's sheep, but it is a nice fellowship event, and it's a nice opportunity to get together with uh, other folks. So please think about that. Bible study Wednesday morning at 10 a.m., uh, as usual. We also have a couple of things coming up. One of them is that we have our dedication of the hoof organ on uh, November 19th, which is a Saturday at 2 in the afternoon. It was intentionally done in the afternoon so that folks who don't drive at night would be able to enjoy it. And uh, we are looking for folks to help with a little reception afterwards. So if you're willing to help with that, please check in with Chris at the office. Um, next Sunday is All Saints Sunday, and we like to remember those in our community who have uh, passed on, So, especially those in the last year. So we will be receiving names for those that we will remember for All Saints Sunday next Sunday. So please call the church office or email Chris and let her know those names that you would like to go on that list. Um, we have a number of folks from our congregation this year that we need to remember. Um, also, Joyce Bowers is at Lexington Medical Center. Uh, she had a fall, and uh, so they've taken her there. Uh, they're kind of getting her back in shape, and so please remember Joyce in your prayers. And we also want to remember the families of Glenn Smith and Baxton Marlowe, who uh, passed away this week and are not members of the congregation, but friends of members here in the congregation. Are there any other announcements from the congregation? Yes, Rita. Go ahead. Uh, we're going to be selecting um, items for transitions. That's coming out of November project. I think uh, Chris has uh, the list and um, the new list. Uh, thank you. Things like socks and yeah, um, coats are always helpful. Um, I think Mary, Mary was telling me the average person there in the mail of uh, <coughs> 55. Wonderful, thank you. Uh, incidentally, Mary is the volunteer chaplain at Transitions, and so it's one of the ways that we connect with the community as well. Deborah. Well, I was just going to say how stunning the altar is today. Stunning. Dressed in red. We're all in red. And thank you, everyone, who wore red. I see a lot of red this year, so you, you can open that umbrella if you want to. <laughs> thank you for, uh, for that. And, uh, you know, we don't like to talk about Reformation Sunday as sort of the 4th of July for the Lutheran Church, but you know, it really is. And, uh, you know, not that we don't like other churches, but, you know, we're kind of proud of our heritage uh, as Lutherans with the Reformation. So glad you could be here for that. Um, thank you to all our visitors who are here with us today. We're so gl grateful to have you. Um, let us know with the Blue Connections card if you'd like for us to know a little bit more about who you are and where you're from. Um, and also the newsletter for the month of November, there is a list, uh, there is a pile of those that usually get mailed out that if you'd like to pick yours up and it's in there, if you get it electronically, then uh, you've got it already and there are also some extra copies in the narthex as well. Wonderful, let's take a few moments to prepare ourselves for worship.
I invite you to stand if you are able for the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who is eager to forgive and who loves us beyond our days. Amen. Dear friends, together let us acknowledge our failure to love this world as Jesus does. God of mercy and forgiveness, we confess that sin still has a hold on us. We have harmed your good creation. We have failed to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you. Turn us in a new direction. Show us the path that leads to life. Be our refuge and strength on the journey. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Beloved of God, your sins are forgiven, and you are made whole. God points the way to new life in Christ, who meets us on the road. Journey now in God's abiding love, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
Let us pray. Almighty God, gracious Lord, we thank you that your Holy Spirit renews the church in every age. Pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep them steadfast in your word. Protect and comfort them in times of trial. Defend them against all enemies of the gospel. And bestow on the church your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading is from Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read Psalm 46 responsively. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth be moved, and though the mountains shake in the depths of the sea, though its waters rage and foam, and though the mountains tremble with its tumult. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city. It shall not be shaken. God shall help it at the break of day. The nations rage and the kingdoms shake. God speaks and the earth melts away. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Come now, regard the works of the Lord. What desolations God has brought upon the earth. Behold the one who makes war to cease in all the world, who breaks the bow and shatters the spear and burns the shields with fire. Be still then and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. The second reading is from Romans. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For no human being will be justified in his sight by deeds prescribed by the law, for through the law comes the knowledge of sin. But now, apart from law, the righteousness of God has been disclosed and is attested by the law and the prophets. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. They are now justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a sacrifice of atonement by his blood, effective through faith. He did this to show his righteousness because in his divine forbearance, he had passed over the sins previously committed. It was to prove at the present time that he himself is righteous and that he justifies the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of boasting? It is excluded. By what law? By that of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that a person is justified by faith apart from works prescribed by the law. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Come to me. Find your rest. Do not 
fear, my yoke is easy. Do not fear, my burdens light. Do not fear the path before you. Do not run from me in fright. The Holy Gospel according to John, the eighth chapter. Glory, Glory to, to you, O Lord. Lord. Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying you will be made free? Jesus answered them, very truly, I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you, Lord Christ. Christ. Seated. Take my yoke and leave your troubles. Take my yoke and come to me. Take my yoke, I am beside you. Take and learn humility. Rest in me, O weary traveler. Rest in me. Trust in me, my heart is gentle, rest and cast away your care. Good morning, church. Those who are uh, here in the sanctuary as well as those who are streaming, it's good to have all of you this morning and it's good to be back here. Uh, I don't get to preach in my home church very often, but I think I always say the same thing, which is when I was a little kid, my feet wouldn't touch the floor sitting in these chairs, and they still don't. <laughs> it's now been 505 years since the beginning of the Protestant Reformation, which, as you know, is credited largely to the protesting and the teaching of Martin Luther in Wittenberg, Germany. When I was a Lutheran kid in the 1960s and 70s, Reformation Day here at St. Michael's was, you know, a pretty big festival, probably after Christmas Eve and Easter Day. It was our biggest time. And that was true in most Lutheran congregations. You know, we all sang our fight song, A Mighty Fortress, and we patted ourselves on the back for our wonderful theology and our awesome biblical interpretation. And this didn't just happen in local congregations, but it often took place, not every year, but it often took place in cities, um, athletic stadiums, when all the Lutherans and anybody else who wanted to come would gather together and community choirs rehearsed for months uh, to prepare these wonderful anthems, especially any ones that were by Bach, our most famous Lutheran church musician. You know, those were the days, and I absolutely love them. One of my best memories of growing up in faith here was the Sunday afternoon that I tagged along with Pastor Brandt, probably when I was in junior high, to go to the big all-city Reformation Day service at the Carolina Coliseum. The place was packed. Can you believe it? Was anybody else there besides me? Okay. Well, the place was packed probably because the president of the Lutheran Church in America that we would now call presiding bishop, Dr. Robert Marshall, was the guest preacher. And what a celebration. I remember seeing him uh, come down the steps 
with the, the sleeves of his surplus kind of flowing like he was an angel coming in. <laughs> Well, now for the, for the most part, we no longer celebrate like this. In fact, we've actually changed our language about Reformation Day as something that we commemorate rather than celebrate. Some of the change has come over the decades, uh, especially in the 20th century, when we realized that celebrating our division with the Catholic Church, with our siblings in Christ, was probably never really a good cause for celebration. And so instead, for decades now, we've been working on reconciliation and forgiveness with other Christians and with, frankly, the Jewish community because Luther had not so good things to say about them. So for those reasons and others, we've kind of taken down the red party balloons, right? <laughs> that seemed a little too congratulatory. For as long as anybody can remember, and I did check with some people that I thought might remember, the gospel reading for Reformation Sunday has been these verses from John 8, 31 to 36. We hear Jesus speak that famous line, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Well, I kind of wonder why out of all the words in the four gospels, this was the church's choice at some point for the gospel reading for Reformation. I wonder if it had to do with that word truth. Probably because in our Protestant pride, we have preached that the Catholic Church got the truth of Christ wrong and Luther got it right. You know, in the 16th century, Luther and the Reformers kind of smashed that idea that the Pope, academics, or priests were the only ones who could interpret Scripture and speak the truth of God for everybody. The church in the 16th century held on to truth with a capital T, meaning no doubt, no debate, no democracy. Luther was also a leader of a movement beyond the church that eventually created what we know as our modern Western society with its great focus on the individual, on education, on reading the Bible for yourself, on growing your own faith as a disciple. Capital T Truth wasn't what the capital C Church full of sinful people said it was. That's what the reformers said. Truth was what the gospel proclaimed. And everybody was called in baptism to live out their discipleship as the Spirit called them. So that's where we were 505 years ago. It was a crisis time for the church. Can you imagine being, you know, in your, your local Catholic church and, and sitting in the pews when all of this stuff was going on? It probably felt like things were rattling apart because they were. The church, our church, finds itself in a pretty big crisis again. We're really in that every 500 year cycle of change and reform. The COVID crisis in 2020, plus the acceleration of technology, put us in a crisis as we had to very, very quickly learn how to be church when we couldn't come to church. That had never happened. 
Because we are a constitutional church, not a church with a pope, when everything closed down and nobody knew what to do, here's how the Reformation of 2020 started. All of a sudden, without any real warning, we had to do some tough theological work, maybe the toughest theological work since the Reformation of the 16th century. You are in that time. We had to ask deep questions about how do you be the gathered body of Christ when you can't physically gather together? And how do we understand the sacraments of communion and baptism when we couldn't gather? And then as we moved along, the questions got even harder when we became a hybrid church, both in person and online, and that this hybrid stuff seemed to be permanent, not temporary. For me, March 15, 2020, was the first day of this new Reformation. That was the day that I and leaders of Christ Lutheran on Hilton Head, where I was serving as interim, decided to suspend in-person worship for a couple of weeks until, until this public health crisis blew over, right? Y'all did that too. Yeah. And because we are a constitutional church, we congregations count on our bishops and our presiding bishop to make some theological recommendations about what we should do so that we can all be kind of, you know, one church together. So presiding Bishop Eaton got in touch with some of our best seminary professors and asked them to write a few theological papers on how to share the word and sacrament when you couldn't physically be together. And since the Second Reformation began in the season of Lent, Bishop Eaton initially recommended that we just do a Lenten fast from communion for these last weeks of the Lenten season. All right, I, I could sell that. We could do that. But remember when we all thought that we'd have a big festival for Easter that year, right? That we would be back. And then mm, that passed. I had people in their 80s say to me, I have attended Easter service every year of my life, except for this one. So that passed, and then we were sure we would be together for Pentecost in seven weeks. And then that passed. And then we were absolutely sure that it wouldn't go past Christmas Eve. And then it was over two years. And it felt like everything was rattling apart, because it, it was. Meanwhile, back on the farm, while the theologians were pondering and the bishops were suddenly public health consultants, congregations like St. Michael's and, and all local pastors and congregations were in the theological trenches deciding how to do things week by week. We were all local theologians and public health experts, and there was no blueprint anywhere to follow. In other words, there was no truth with a capital T. That kind of creates a crisis. My executive committee on Hilton Head was meeting twice a week by Zoom for at least two hours every time, and my council by Zoom every week. I've never been so busy from my breakfast table in my life. <laughs> Pastors were comparing notes on how they were handling pastoral care and how they were handling communion. And I would hear of some things that some folks were doing, and I'd say, no, I just don't think that's a good practice. Or if we want to do that, I sure hope it's temporary 
and not permanent. And then by the time that I got to Easter Day 2020, when I celebrated the first communion of Easter with one staff person and a laptop in attendance, I engaged in a practice that just one month before I would have considered heretical. I blessed the bread and wine on the altar table, and then I asked my zooming in households to have their own bread and wine ready at home. And I invited them to either commune each other or to commune themselves. And maybe in the process, for the first time ever, we Lutherans actually lived out one of the greatest doctrines of the 16th century Reformation, that we are a priesthood of all believers. And we lived out the call of our baptism, as Luther put it once, that every mother is a bishop to her own children. And so there we were. The real and lasting theology of the Reformation in 2020 happened as Luther always hoped, as a work of the people. And I figure it won't be too long before the stories of what the church did during and following COVID will be gathered together. Books are gonna be written for sure. And when those stories are shared, I also suspect that a theology will emerge of how to be the body of Christ, of how to be a member of a congregation, of how to live the gospel in the world in very different ways. We're gonna to have to answer some questions like, if there are people who are only part of our Christian community or our local congregation with an online presence, are they, can they be members of this congregation? We've never had to think thoughts like that before. So we are making theological truth through the living of our lives in response to the gospel. Trends are showing that in probably 50 years, Christians will only be 50% of American culture. People with no faith affiliation will continue to grow, but basically, we'll just be a much more pluralistic faith community in our country. And as a Christian community, we have many, many opportunities in this new time. You see, while we might be head over heels in love with the story of our past, the handsome vision of the future must be our new church boyfriend. When Jesus says you will know the truth and the truth will set you free, we need to know that that word truth on the lips of Jesus in John's gospel doesn't mean a certain set of beliefs or doctrine. Truth means being in relationship with Jesus. As Christians, we can speak our own truth as witnesses to our relationship with Jesus, no matter what our times and circumstances, we can tell our experience of what Jesus has done and is doing in the world. Because the truth that sets us free is this. Whether the times are easy or hard, whether the world is building bigger tables or building higher walls, whether it's leaning toward peace or leaning toward violence, in all of it, 
Christ accompanies us. That's the truth. And that truth sets us free. Free from our fear of failure, our anxiety that we're all alone, or our sadness that our lives haven't turned out to what we hoped for. But reformations will keep happening, big and little. And guess what? We are all reformers. Because while change is inevitable, irrelevancy is not. A mighty fortress is indeed our God, our refuge, and our strength. Thanks be to God. Amen. Having heard God's word, let us confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In gratitude and humility, let us join together in prayer on behalf of all of God's creation. God, our fortress, we pray for the church. Write your law of love on the hearts of your people, that we remain steadfast in our witness to your grace. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God, our liberator, we pray for your earth. Bring new life to overused land and contaminated rivers. Reform and reorient our relationship with the environment, that we carefully care for all of your creation. Hear us, O God. God, our refuge and strength, we pray for the nations. Where they are in an uproar, bring wise leadership and comfort for those in distress. Make wars to cease and peace to enter every land. We pray especially today for the country of Ukraine. Hear us, O oh God. God, our very present help in trouble, we pray for those in need. Show mercy to refugees and all fleeing from danger. Shelter any without homes. Calm all who are facing illness, surgery, 
or a new diagnosis. We pray especially today for Bill, Bill. John Martin, John Martin. Keith, Keith, Leslie, Leslie. Henry, Henry. Don, Don, Joyce, Joyce. Joe, Joe, Allison, Allison. Jackie, Jackie, Terry, Terry. Susie, Susie. Susie, Susan, Susan. Harry, Harry, Richard. Richard. We pray for those in our congregation who are in service to our country. We pray today for Tyler, Tyler. Samantha, Samantha, Zachary, Zachary. Grant, Grant, Victor, Victor. Phil, Phil, Colin, Colin. Griffin, Griffin, Brian, Brian. Hunter, Hunter, and Colt. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God, our Redeemer, we pray for our congregation. Bless all who are preparing for baptism or affirmation of baptism. Open their hearts to your Holy Spirit. Teach them your word and give them courage to proclaim their faith. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God, our stronghold, we give thanks for those who have gone before us in faith especially Martin Luther and all reformers, Glenn Smith and Braxton Barlow. Renew and reform us as we strive to continue in your word. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. With grateful hearts, we commend our spoken and silent prayers to you, O oh God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Please stand if you're able. Let us pray. Gracious God, in your great love, you richly provide for our needs. Make of these gifts a banquet of blessing and make us ready to share with all in need through Jesus Christ who sets a table for all. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Blessed are you, God most high. We give thanks for your holy covenant, your promise to Abraham, your mercy to the house of David, your word spoken through the prophets, and your beloved son, the dawn of our salvation. We praise and magnify you, O God. Blessed are you, Jesus Christ, forgiving Savior, merciful Lord. We trust in your tender compassion. You are the good Samaritan, we the wounded traveler. You are the sweeping woman, we the lost coin. 
You ate with Mary, Martha, and Zacchaeus, and you filled Emmaus with your resurrection. We praise and magnify you, O God. We praise and magnify you, O God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For this meal and for your presence within it we sing. We praise and magnify you, O God. We praise and magnify you, O God. Blessed are you, Holy Spirit, power of the Most High. As you came to Mary, come to us and to this meal. Welcome us home that together we may feast on your love. Feed us with the body of Christ that we may be holy and righteous before you. Heal us that with Dorcas we may rise to serve those in need. Send us into all the world preaching the power of your peace. We praise and magnify you, O God. We praise and magnify you, O God. Blessed are you, mighty one, Father, Son, and Spirit, shepherd of forgiveness, author of light, light in our darkness. We join with the multitude of angels to praise and magnify your name, singing glory to God in the highest heaven, today, tomorrow, and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ invites you to this table. Come, taste, and see.
Please stand. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. God of the abundant table, you have refreshed our hearts in this meal with bread for the journey. Give us your grace on the road that we might serve our neighbors with joy. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God, who gives life to all things and frees us from despair, bless you with truth and peace. And may the Holy Trinity, one God, guide you always in faith, hope, and love. Amen. Amen. Saints and priests, 
Go in peace with Christ beside you.